keeping you safe and keeping you mentally there for you and your family and the next level of your life. Let's give a hand clap for Pastor Terrence Merrill. Come on, come on somebody. Listen, he came back to us the same way he left. Come on somebody. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing messed up. Came back with the same wife, same family. Come on, only God can do that. Am I right about it? Come on somebody. Come on in here. Hallelujah. And his wife, Shania, my home, where's my home girl? Where is she? Oh, she's not, okay, home girl ain't here today. All right. Amen. And we, she and I grew up together in Red Bay. Glad to have her. And final, last but not least, I have to give uh, adoration and, and praise uh, to my beautiful, my beautiful wife in all of her pulchritude. That would be Pastor Kimberly Pleasant. Come on and stand up, Pastor Kimberly. Come on. Come on and stand up. Amen. And this is the last one for those who don't know. I got two more, actually, two more. And, and my daughter, Nakara Ross, is here. Nakara, stand up. Come on and stand up. Come on, give everybody a hand clap. Yeah, everybody looking like that's your daughter. Yeah, that's my daughter. Amen. 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 And then we have two pastors uh, that I just met yesterday from Kansas. Am I correct? Would y'all please stand up? I want to give you an acknowledgement as well. Come on and stand up because I look forward to us fellowshipping together and being on the battlefield together. And it's a pleasure and an honor to serve with you. Somebody say amen. All right, let's get straight into it this morning. Uh, Pastor Terrence, I want you to know we have worked everything out. We got all the PowerPoints ready to go, and we're good to go. And we, we, it was a last-minute thing there, but we made it all work out because God, uh, he is a God of order. With him, everything is copacetic. Somebody say amen. 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 So uh, what I want to do is, uh, if it's okay, I want everybody to stand, and we're going to recite the scripture uh, together. You can see it uh, on the overhead. Uh, we're going to recite it together. Together and then we're going to give you the word. I'm going to preach and then we're going to go home. How about that? Is that all right? Amen. Oh, this is just a beautiful sanctuary, Pastor Terrence. I'm telling you, God is blessing you. I want y'all to give yourself another hand clap one more time. Come on. I'm so excited. I, I, I share I share in your joy and your accomplishments as well. Uh, all right, we're going to read, and you guys do the King James Version, so I'm going to recite the King James Version that's up there. Let's repeat it together. Uh, one, two, ready, go. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Now, I want you to say it one more time. We're going to do it two times. Let's do it one more time. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. All right, and this is the last time for the Holy Spirit. Here we go. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. All right, now, what I want to do, I want to give a, a prequel to this message, and I want to say that a lot of people very seldom now will even preach this passage of Scripture because we are living into a meism type uh, environment where it is all all about self and nobody wants to give of themselves to bless the body of Christ and I want you to know now that what is taking place is there is a new move of God where we all must become selfless to become more of self than we ever have been in our lives and therefore God is requiring us now to cast that bread to give it up to release it give your gift give your time give your ingenuity give your mind give everything you have to him and the Bible says for thou shall find it after many days now I, I, I want everybody to do this and this is the word for this morning and pray with me as we lift it up in the Holy Spirit the word is Lord you can have my bread Come on, somebody. Come on and pray with me. Pray with me very quickly. Lord, you can have my bread. Now give God a hand clap as you take your seat. Very quick. Lord, you can have my bread. And I uh, want to go there and, and, and see how God's going to move and what he's going to do. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I have to, y'all know I'm a teacher by nature. So I teach, I teach before I preach. Uh, but you better believe there's a hoop in here somewhere and it's coming. Somebody say amen. So Mr. Mr. Oregon, hey, how you doing there, brother? All right, all right. So know the hoop is coming. So get ready. 
It's coming, but we're going to teach first. Now, watch this. The scripture says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. And we're lifting up the topic, Lord, you can have my bread. You can have my bread. Here's point number one. I want to go through point number one very quickly, and I want everybody to get this. Point number one is this. In our darkest moment, God Yahweh will send a word of sacrifice to us immediately. And so let me do that point again. And the point is, in our darkest moment, God Yahweh will send a word of sacrifice to us immediately. I want everybody to say sacrifice. Yes, yes, that's the word. And so if you don't mind, and y'all please just bear with me. I'm, you know, uh, I'm very simple in my teaching because I wanted to have the maximum impact. Uh, the word sacrifice here uh, in this scripture, uh, when we look at it in the Hebrew and the Aramaic, the word sacrifice means giving up something that you value as necessary in your life to God, Yahweh, when he asks you for it, but you don't want to depart from it. Let me, let me say that again. That's sacrifice. Sacrifice is giving up something that you value as necessary in your life to God Yahweh when he asks you for it, but you don't want to separate from it. See, that's a sacrifice. And, and, and what I want you to see this morning is this, uh, because I'm a business PhD uh, and I have a business mindset, an economics mindset, one of the courses that we took very early on in, when I was in a master's program and a PhD program at Georgia Institute of Technology uh, in economics, we didn't get past the first four chapters without learning about something called opportunity cost. <laughs> opportunity cost. Everybody say opportunity cost. Now, for those of you who don't know what opportunity cost is, opportunity cost is giving up something today in order to get something better tomorrow. Can I talk to somebody right now? Is that all right? Is that all right? It is giving up something today in order to get something better tomorrow. Pastor, Pastor Terrence, and, 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 and I want you to know Pastor Merle, Elder Merle, leaders of this church, there's a lot of people that want something better tomorrow, but they don't want to give up anything today. Mm. And see, the Lord is saying that in order for me to move, I got to know that you're willing to depart with that which I gave you anyway, which is temporary for me to give you what you even didn't know that you needed, which is eternal. Come on, somebody. And so we've got to learn how to release what we have to get what we never even was able to think about. Is this making sense to anybody? And so it's about service. It's about going to the next level. Let me tell you something. God's got enough lip service. He's got enough tongue talkers. He's got enough hand layers. He's got enough prophesiers. He has enough singers. But he doesn't have enough people that's willing to give of their body, to give of their service, to give of their heart, their soul, and their mind to him so that he can use you in a way that you never even thought of. I've been doing this thing now for 30 years, believe it or not. It's been 30 years since I first picked up the microphone and began to preach. And one thing that I have learned is that I can't outgive God. I've learned that when I made a decision to dedicate myself to him and to work for him, he began to prosper me in my health and in my life and in my family and my marriage with my children. Listen, even my two dogs are anointed in the name of Jesus. They eat Alpo and Little Caesar. Come on, somebody. They don't get the Kroger bag food. They get the top of the line. That's how blessed we are. When you decide to give up yourself to God. So let's review point number one. Point number one is in our darkest moment, God, Yahweh, will send a word of sacrifice to us in order to depart from something that means a lot to us. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to go to Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4. I want to go there very quickly so you can see this. And you know this passage of scripture, probably even know it better than I know 
know it. And you remember Jesus was in being baptized and he went down in the water and he came back up. And when he came up, God said, the father God, Yahweh said, listen, this is my son who I am well pleased. And watch after the celebration and the anointing. Immediately the scripture said, the Holy Spirit led him in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And for 40 days and 40 nights, somebody say amen. He was without food and order, water. Thank God it was Jesus and not me because I can only do four hours and four minutes without food or water. Y'all ain't got to clap. I'm just talking about me. But the point is, thank God Jesus had to do that and not me. But understand, at this time, Jesus was at his weakest moment. He was at his most gullible and vulnerable moment. And the devil comes to him and the devil says, you need to turn if you are. Notice what the devil said. The devil knew who he was, but he was tempting Jesus. He said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Now watch Matthew 4 and 4 and look at Jesus' response. Jesus said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from out of the mouth of God. Can I get an amen in here, somebody? Am I talking to somebody? See, he was saying, man, don't live by the fleshly stuff, Satan. You missing this. He was saying, I don't live by the car that I drive. I don't live based on the address where I live at. I don't live by how much money I have in the bank. I don't live by how I dress or how I look or how much I weigh. I live by the word of God, but it's a word that is not just in scripture, but a word that is rhema that is spoken to me that lines up with scripture in my moment of need and my moment of purpose am I talking to somebody and so I want you to get this now it is written man shall not live by bread alone but every word that what comes from the what mouth of God and li li listen now somebody say what is that word let me can I be honest with you I have done a lot of studying I've been in a lot of deep prayer God is telling me from now on for quite a while all he's going to bring from his mouth is a word of sacrifice a word of giving up something so that you can get something better that you never even thought of. Your lips won't even be able to put it together what God has already in store for you. Somebody say amen. Now to him who is able to exceedingly and abundantly do more and immeasurably more than you can ever ask or according to what y'all? To the power that works where? On the inside of you. Amen. You got that. Amen. Let's go to point number two. Hey, somebody say you moving. I'm moving in grooving here we go point number two the fastest way watch this now watch this the fastest way to get help from God Yahweh when we need it is to help someone else when they need it Uh, did y'all catch that right there? I tell you what, uh, uh, Pastor Mer Pastor Terrence, I'm telling you now, Pastor Merle, Elder Merle, I'm so excited to be here. Because see, there's a lot of places that scripture and that point won't preach too good right there. Because it's about what God can do for you, but God is saying, what can you do for me? See, see, it is about what we do for him, not what he does for us. Because he's already done for us what we could never do for him. He's already died for us on the cross. And he died in advance, even before we were born, knowing we were going to mess up. Am I talking to somebody right now? Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't all that. <laughs> You're not perfect. If you think you are, you better watch your step. Come on, give God a hand clap on that one. Watch this now. Let me, let me do this point again. The fastest way to get help from God, Yahweh, when we need it, is to help someone else when they need it. Now watch this thing. I want to go this. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. And Proverbs 11, 25 is very near and dear to my heart as well. And Proverbs 11, 25 says, whoever brings blessing will be enriched. Did y'all see that? Watch this. And the one who waters will himself be watered. And let me read it, King James, for you. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered among also himself. What does that scripture mean? Well, let me back it up. I want to I look at this word fat. The word fat means to be enriched. Someone said, well, what does this word enriched mean? This particular Hebrew Aramaic word means to be made prosperous. That's what the word fat means. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm fat and I'm not going on a diet. 
I'm fat, and I'm going to stay blessed with God. That's what I tell myself every day. Y'all ain't got to talk. I, most of the most anointed preachers I know are fat. Y'all ain't got to talk, man. It's them little skinny ones. I ain't talking about Pastor Terrence. You got a nice weight on you. I'm talking about them little skinny, narrow pastors. They get up there and just give three points in a psycho babble message, and they sit down. Y'all ain't got to clap, and folk go home, and there's no change. Look, and I want me a fat singer, too. Come on, somebody. That's the anointing. The yokes will be destroyed because you've grown so fat. In the old days, the fat people were as everybody wanted to be fat. Y'all ain't got to clap. All of y'all that's a little overweight need to clap on that message right there now. I'm building up your self-esteem right now. Come on, somebody. Yes, watch this thing. So it means to be made prosperous, fat. And one of the things I remember in the 90s for the, some of the young people that are here, there was a word we used to use in the 90s called fat, but it was spelled P-H-A-T. And fat meant you had it going on. Fat meant you had that BMW 535. Come on, somebody. Fat meant you had a house with two doors and the front door versus one. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that's what fat meant. But God says, look, when you serve me, when you help others, I begin to increase your supply how many of you know when God increases your supply you can give out even more as you get more y'all ain't talking to me somebody say amen. amen then we have waters because the word said that we will he who waters will himself be watered what do you mean he who waters will himself be watered the word water means watch this now this word waters in the greek and hebrew and aramaic means to pour liquid in abundance to pour liquid in abundance. Y'all ain't catching that. that. That means there's a, look, watch this. When you develop a mindset, when you make a decision, I'm going to sacrifice to God. I'm going to give all to my God. Watch this now. I'm going to work more for God in the church and in the ministry field and in the gospel that I don't get paid for than I work for the person that I go to from Monday through Friday, nine to five. Are y'all talking to me right now? Somebody said, well, you're telling me not to work. Please don't get it mixed, mis misconstrued and all messed up. Don't get it twisted. I didn't say quit your job. I didn't say half work on your God job because the Bible says as a Christian, we are to work unto God and work like nobody else has ever seen. Here's what I'm saying. God is saying when you make a decision, you're going to put the gospel field first, when you're going to put service in the church first, when you're going to honor the place where you worship and praise at, God says, I'm going to make your six-hour day or your eight-hour day feel like a two-hour day, but you're going to produce like it was a 14-hour day, and you're going to get a 36-hour paycheck based on an eight-hour day that you only work four in. Y'all ain't got the clap. I'm just talking to you. See, now, if y'all please just, just, just bear with me now. Uh, you, know, I, you know, this is when I usually get a little few haters, but Pastor Terrence and pa Pastor Merle, Elder Merle, and everybody in the church, I am a polyhistor, and people don't know what a polyhistor is. Well, I'm a polymath, and people don't know what a polymath is, and all that means is I'm a man that is well-trained and well-learned and can do anything and everything when I get ready to do it. That's what it means. Now, now and, and I, don't, I don't mean, you know, I don't mean to be grand, grandiloquent or anything, but I'm trying to get you understand as I try to increase the vocabulary wherever I go and preach. I'm trying to get you see. Now, folk don't like when I use big words, but you use your words. You know, we say things that, you know, we come up with our little street language. You know, we got swag. We got this and, you know, baby mama, daddy and all that. If we can get new slang, why can't we get new verbs? Come on, somebody say amen. So, so I'm a logophile, I'm also an etymologist. I study the root origin and meanings of words and the, the, the evolution of those words over time because the power is so much there. And, and, and what I'm trying to say to you and I want to get you to understand is when we talk about this thing and we're talking about being able to do anything and everything, let me say this, and, I, and I'm being as humble as I can but as real as I am, people at where I work, for those of you who don't know, I'm the, I am now the Dean of Graduate Education at Clark Atlanta University. Somebody say amen. And for those of you who don't mean, know what that means, that means if anybody here want to come get their graduate degree, just send me a letter, it's done. Somebody say amen. That's power. Look at your neighbor and say, that's power right there. That's power. Now, watch this now. And what folk don't understand and what I used to hear early in my career was there is no way you can be a professor and 
preach at the same time. And I would ask them, why did you say that? They said, because there's no way you can be a preacher full time and be a teacher and a professor at the college level full time because most of you all know as a college professor, you have to uh, write papers. We call it public or, or perish and you have to publish articles that are, you know, reviewed and accepted by your peers and they're usually difficult to do, but you have to, you know, do so, you know, so many of them to, to become tenured. And, and so I would always say, you can't do all that. And, and, and guess what? They were right. I can't do all that, but I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Y'all ain't got the clap. How many of you know, not only did I publish papers, I became the number one publisher in the marketing department at Clark Atlanta University. I got full tenure. That means they can't fire me. Come on, somebody. Then the new president comes in and say, I just don't understand why you've never been dean of the business school or dean of anything. I anoint you. I appoint you. You're now dean of graduate education. It happened overnight. That's why I always tell people, success will not come in one night, but one night success will come. All you got to do is be willing to put God first and serve him with all your heart and never look back put your hand to the plow don't look back and do what God says and he will elevate you not only in the sight of man but in the sight of believers somebody say amen in this place And, and so somebody said, what, what are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is, is that Pastor Merle, I was sitting yesterday listening to the retirement session and I watched him as he was fighting his tears and finally he broke through and let him come out. But what he didn't know is I was crying, my wife was crying, his mother was crying, his father was crying. I turned around and looked, his wife was crying, his children were crying. The majority of people in there were crying and folk didn't understand what was taking place. And they were celebrating your retirement, but I was celebrating your commencement and your anointing because it is now time for you to rise up and do everything that God ever called you to do. All the military training. You talked about mission yesterday. There's a mission that you're on now and it is not impossible. It's possible because of God and with the help of your mom and your dad, you're getting ready to take this church to levels that no one has ever seen in this whole county of Sumter and the state of South Carolina. Let it be decreed and declared right now that Victory Church is getting ready to be the landmark and the foundation and the anointing and calling that God called it to be. If you're a believer in this place, somebody say amen. Come on somebody, say amen in here. He kept talking. He and, and, and I was sitting by Pastor Merrill yesterday. Somebody say amen. Come on, give yeah, amen. I was sitting by Pastor Merrill. I said, every time he would always say, and my family just got to know I sacrificed everything for them. And I sacrificed this and I sacrificed that. And I kept looking at Pastor Merrill. I said, Pastor Merrill, remember the word sacrifice. I said, just keep remembering the word sacrifice. I said, he's already preaching the sermon tomorrow. Just keep remembering sacrifice. Because see, you sacrifice in the military for your family, but you were really sacrificing for this that's getting ready to take place right now. You thought you were a great colonel, but you're getting ready to be a general in the army of God and take this church places it's never been gone before come on somebody say amen is that all right pastor Merrill is that all right mother Merrill is that all right and see pastor Merrill knows this and please understand she's got a long time to minister and a long time to be here but she knows your legacy is not based on what you do it's based on what the one that comes after you is able to do come on somebody say amen oh they ain't getting many hand claps on that I'm gonna move on I feel it pastor Merrill Pastor Terrence, you need to go ahead and receive your anointing right now. Receive your power right now. It's receive your next calling right now. Get ready to go to the next level in the name of Jesus. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God is getting ready to do in this church, in this town, in this state to this pastor right here.
Somebody look at your neighbor and say, and me too. <laughs> so go ahead and say, and me too. <laughs> say, as he is blessed, uh, I am blessed. Uh, as he goes up, uh, I'm going up. Uh, folk gonna be looking at you saying, how did they get that? Uh, how did they do that? Uh, how can they afford that? Uh, how can they live here? Uh, how can they ride like that? Uh, how can they be, y'all ain't talking to me, get ready for God to do Somebody say, the anointing flows from the head down. Say it. All right. All right. All right. Repeat after me. You, Lord, you can have my bread. Now let's go to point number three. The best way to serve God Yahweh is when we are tired and exhausted and want to give up. Come on, hit, hit, hit me one time. I didn't get no help out there. Hit. I, I usually don't get a whole lot of hand claps when I make some statement like that, you know. Listen to me. The best way to serve God Yahweh is when we are tired and exhausted and want to give up. Pastor Merle, do you know what I'm talking about, Pastor Merle? When you're tired, when you're not feeling good, when the doctor told you not to come to the, me the, the meeting this morning, when the doctor tells you you can't leave the house, uh, and you said, I know what you said, but I'm going to go on just a little farther longer and see what the end's going to be. I'm going to resurrect myself with God's power. You can't hold me back. I bought this church. I've been working for this church. And doggone it, I'm going to preach and enjoy myself in this church. Devil, you ain't stop me from preaching in the house that I've been working for for over 25 years. Y'all ain't got the club. Come on, somebody say amen. I said, I'm tired. But I know where my help comes from. I lift up my eyes to the hill from whence my help comes. My help cometh from the Lord. Point number three. The best way to serve God Yahweh is when we are tired and exhausted. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians chapter 9 and 10. Don't, don't, I'm not, seriously, I'm not, this is not a joke. I, I'm not, I'm not talking about you, but I just want you to say this. I'm tired. Just go ahead and say it. No, come on, somebody. Come on. Just, just work. I'm serious. I mean it. Just say it. I'm tired. That's all I wanted to hear. Watch this now. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Oh, y'all getting real quiet on me now. Watch this. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Watch this now. Watch this. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Can, can I get some help? Can you... Can, can. Pastor Merle, nobody, nobody ran the aisles when they were doing good till we got to the last part. They said, especially to the men of the household of faith. Let, let me read that again. And let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Watch this. Do you know what is wrong with the church? We don't help our members and fellow members that we sit in church next to and praise and worship with. We come here to get what we need, but you never consider what they might need. And if the church would ever get out of what it needs for itself, but what people need in the body and what the other person sitting next to you need, you wouldn't have anything to ever need because you're too busy satisfying somebody else's need. See, 
God raised us up to help everybody else. See, you see, most of the people don't know. Everybody that's sitting next to you smiling on the outside really ain't happy on the inside. You don't know what it was like in some people's home just last night. You don't know what some people are struggling with in their family. Some folks are sitting here right now wondering how they're going to pay that mortgage bill and that car payment that's coming up. Somebody say amen. They got a smile on their face, but they got a challenge in their heart. Did you hear what I just said? A smile on their face, but a big challenge in their heart. And this is where the power of the church comes. Because see, when someone is down and you are up, you're not supposed to walk around highfalutin around them. But you're supposed to say, hey, my brother, hey, my sister, I just got a feeling on the inside that something just ain't right with you. Here's $5, here's $10, here's $20. Can I come over and cook you a meal? Can You, you want to borrow my car? I know they took yours, but you can borrow mine. I don't have to be the work the second shift you work first shift y'all ain't talking to me but in my bible it said when the church started in the book of acts they all worshiped together and shared everything and everybody had everything in common and the bible said no one was lacking anything and then when we talk about especially those in the household of faith we're then talking about the pastor somebody say amen that means then you take care of your house y'all ain't talking to me your, your pastor, this church should never have to seek anybody outside to need anything. You ought to be able to take care of your own business. Come on, somebody. And you need to contribute into your pastor's life. Go ahead and give me, get a little shout in the amen on that. Just say it out loud. I'm going to contribute in my pastor's life. All right, all right, all right. Y'all did okay on that one. You did good. You did good. Now, now, if you don't mind, let me back up because I'm getting ready to conclude this thing. And uh, I just want to go over to the points here. We said the title was, Lord, you can have my bread. And we said, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. Isn't that what we said? And then we did point number one. Point number one was, in our darkest moment, God, Yahweh, will send a word of sacrifice to us. Remember that one? And then point two, we said, the fastest way to get help from God, Yahweh, when we need it, is to help someone else when they need it. Didn't we say that? And we talked about opportunity costs. We talked about a sacrifice. We talked about, we talked about giving up something you don't want to give up to get something you never had. And then we did point number three. Point number three is the best way to serve God. It got a little quiet, but that's all right. Uh, the best way to serve God, Yahweh, is when you, we are tired and exhausted and want to quit. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, since we said that, that, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, conclude this thing and see if we can unwrap and unpack this little package and, and put everything together. Somebody say amen. amen. Repeat after me again. Lord, you can have my bread. Let's start at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. That's where I, I'm sorry, not Galatians. Let's go to 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17, uh, and we're going to start at verse number 8. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse number 8 is where we're going to start. Watch this. Then the word, for those of you who don't know, here's what's happening. There's this woman, uh, and she is a widow, and it's just her son. Somebody say Amen. And she's about to die. Come on, somebody. She's walking to get her some sticks so she can make her have her last meal and her last supper. Come on, somebody. And she runs into what? The man of God who is a member of what? The household of faith. Come on, somebody. She's tired and she's weary. Y'all know the story and you know where I'm going, don't you? Now, look at the scripture. Then the word of the Lord, right? Then the word of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord. Let me say it again because maybe y'all forgot that a man doesn't live by bread alone but by the word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the word of the Lord came to him, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. He is talking to the prophet. He's talking to Elijah. He's saying, Elijah, I'm giving you a word now. I don't even know whether you're tired or hungry, but I got a word for you. And this word I got for you means you got to leave where you are to go where I'm sending you. So you even have to make a sacrifice. Come on, somebody. He says, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Now, for those of you who don't catch this, let me break it down for you. See, when God is working, getting ready to work out a blessing and when he's getting ready to work out a miracle, he gives two conditional statements to the two parties that can potentially be blessed by what he wants to do. Let me say that again. You just can't stumble in a blessing from God. Let me repeat that. 
God will move on the one person and God will move on the other person, but all both of them have to do what they're supposed to do in order to get the one thing from the one God that can give them what they don't have. Is that making sense to anybody? Moving on, he says, I have commanded a widow there to what? To feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. I'm going to read this and I'm going to come back and I'm going to exegete it. Watch this now. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Repeat after me. I ain't got but a little bit, Lord. <laughs> and you want me to give it away? <laughs> Come on and say that. Say that now. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth and she went and did as Elijah said and as she and her household ate for many days watch this the jar of flour was not spent neither did the jug of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah somebody say amen, amen. now watch this let me do a little a, a pexegesis that's different from an uh, from an exegesis an exegesis is an explanation of the text and a pexegesis is an explanation of the text as it explains itself now watch this I want you to catch this real quick then the word of the Lord came to him, arise now, go. So watch him working on both of the, the, the parties here that's going to be blessed. And when he goes into the town, he finds this woman. The woman is there. She's gathering her sticks. Now watch what, I want you to put yourself in the place of this woman. Somebody say amen. Now watch this thing. Now imagine you are now standing in line at Piggly Wiggly. Come on, somebody. And you're getting ready to get you some pig feet and chicken feet. Come on, someone. You know when you're on your last leg, you, get, you know the meal cuts down pretty good come on and as my daddy and mother used to say some pork and beans and rice come on somebody not pork poke pork and beans and rice come on in here now every time we buy something new past Terrence we will eat pork and beans and rice for a few weeks now watch this thing. So here they are. Get, they're in line. They're, you, you're in line. You're, you're on your last leg. You know things about to run off. The lights are already cut off. And you know this is it. They've got a ration on food, et cetera, et cetera. And Pastor Merrill walks up to you. Pastor Terrence walked up to you and he said, hey, how you doing? You said, I'm doing good, Pastor. He said, look here. Uh, uh, first of all, I know you're here to get some, but can you do me a favor real quick? Can you get me some water? How many of y'all would look at, now Pastor Merrill, I know you're my pastor. I thank you for baptizing my children. I thank you for marrying me and my husband. I thank you for counseling us when you know we went through that little hard time together. I thank you for all that. But you must be crazy if you think I'm going to give you some water and we got a food ration and you see me getting these pig feet and chicken feet and pork and beans. Watch this thing now. Watch what happens. He asked her, he says, can you bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink? And if that is not enough, I want you to see the audacious nature of Elijah. As she is going to bring the water, he then said, oh, bring me a morsel of bread too in your hand. Isn't that just like them pastors? always taken from you and you in need don't they see your need the pastor ought to have the soup line at the church the pastor ought to be giving you food at the church and here you are in line and you're about to run out of food and you want the pastor to help you and the pastor wants you to help him look at your neighbor say it's all about a sacrifice look at your neighbor say the blessing that starts from God comes from God because of God. Now watch this. He says, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now watch this. A lot of people, a lot of pastors miss this point because he said, bring me a little water in the vessel. But watch this. Let me tell you, it would have never gotten to the point where he would have requested the morsel of bread if she had not been immediately obedient in striking out to go get the water. 
Literally, it was about the bread. It wasn't about the water. But literally, it was about the water that was going to constitute the initiation of the bread. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't have the bread without water, and you can't have water without bread. Or y'all getting real quiet. Uh, in fact, if she didn't operate and start moving in obedience in the water, there never would have been any bread. Let me break it down. You got to have bread to have you some water in order to water to bring life to the bread. You can't have neither without the other, but you got to put them together and trust in God. Maybe y'all forgot. Cast your bread upon the So it was in her water that allowed the bread to show up. If she had not gone to get the water, there would have never been bread when the bread was the initial issue. God will give you an assignment to do that you can't figure out, but you got to move in what he gave you. We call that faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You might not be able to know it. You might not be able to understand it. You can't fathom it. You can't put it in your mind, but just do what God told you to do. And he said, as the Lord God lives, watch this. I, she said, look, as the Lord God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jar. Did he ask her any of that? He just told her to go, didn't he? She said, and now on top of that, I'm paraphrasing, and now on top of that, Pastor Terrence, you asking me to gather a couple of sticks and go in and prepare for myself the sun. I'm going in to eat and die, and now you asking me for water and my food? Let me break it down another way. I tied last week, and here you want me to tithe again. I don't know whether I'm going to have enough food to eat next week, but you're still asking me to continue to tithe. Y'all getting real quiet. Watch this thing now. Watch this. He says, and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Watch this. He said, she, she, she's going through the story. He said, but first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. Now, wait a minute. First, you asked me for the water. I'm on the way to get the water. Come on, somebody. In fact, come on. Uh, y'all y'all pray, y'all pray me because I, I got the hoop and I need me some hooping music. So I'm a, what I'm going to do, I'll just give you this. Give me that. Uh, just give me, uh, give me, uh. uh yeah, 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 there you go. Hit it hard. Go, uh. Because I'm a, I'm a hard Negro. Go, uh. There you go. All right, all right. Here we go. So every time you see, see me take a break, just hit, go ahead, hit it. Okay, let's practice it. One, two, three, I'm talking. Pause. One, two, three, I'm talking. One, two, three, I'm talking. Now I'm ready to preach. Somebody say amen. He said, now, ah, don't go long. Go short now. Come on, let's do it again. I'm talking and I'm preaching. And I'm saying it like I mean it. And I'm preaching it like I feel it. All right, we there now. Let's go now. And I'm gathering a couple of sticks. And I'm preparing it for myself. I'm getting ready to die. But look at what Elijah tells a woman. He said, don't fear. Go and do it like I told you. But wait a minute. I got another assignment. Bring me a little bit of cake. And afterwards, then you can eat some for you and your son. Watch this, everybody. Come on now, come on. Y'all give, give him a hand clap. He gonna get this, come on. Come on, give him a hand clap. Pastor Terrence getting anointed and you getting anointed because he gonna start hooping and when he start hooping, you got to join in. Somebody say, yeah! Say, yeah! And he all right! I know he's all right! Give God a hand clap, somebody. Watch this now. He says, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jar of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. Y'all ain't clapping. You're missing your shout right there. But y'all don't understand. She's dealing with a man of God. She's talking to Elijah. Y'all still don't get it. But my Bible says that Elijah said when it was going to rain and when it wasn't going to rain. And my Bible says just before he met this woman, God said when you decide for it to start raining, it'll start raining. And when you decided for it to stop, it will stop. Y'all ain't got to clap. Uh, but the woman, come on, Mr. Musician, uh, come on and stay with me now. Uh, he was saying, uh, you will not run out of food uh, or oil uh, for many days uh, until it rains. Uh, how many of you know uh, that the Bible says uh, that it didn't rain uh, for three years? Uh, Y'all ain't got to clap. Uh, 
you, you missing your shout huh? that meant she only had enough uh, to make it through the day huh? but because she gave a sacrifice huh? she gave up something huh? now huh? to get something huh? better huh? y'all don't have to clap now huh? she only had one day left huh? but because she placed it in the hand of the man huh? that believes in the Lord huh? she got three years now huh? one for the father huh? one for the son huh? and three for the Holy Ghost huh? oh y'all ain't got to clap now huh? somebody say yeah Somebody say, yeah. Y'all ain't got to clap. But I want you to see this. One thing I know, when you cast your bread upon the waters, didn't the scripture say you will find it after many days, not one day. She came with one day left, but got many years on the record. Somebody say, yeah. Ain't he all right? I know he's all right. Now watch this thing now. I'm about to sit down. Keep working with me now. I'm 58 years old, but I preach like I'm 25. Now watch this, y'all. I'm about to tighten it up now. I want you to see this now. See, what's taking place here is this woman did not know that this was not. Come on now. This was not. Come on, baseball. This was not the end of the story. Because guess what? She thought the blessing stopped there with the food for three years. But my Bible says a few years later, her son died in that same house and he lost his life. She said, wait a minute. Let me find my bread. Y'all ain't got the clap. How many of y'all know? Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. See, it wasn't about her eating. It was about the death of her son. It wasn't about the famine. It was about the death of her son. When the son died, she called on that same man that asked her to give her some water and make her some bread. Y'all ain't got the clap. What am I saying? Pastor Merrill, Pastor Terrence can't resurrect you until you cast your bread on the waters. Y'all ain't got to clap now, but I want you to see you got to give up something today because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Somebody say, hey, any all right? Any all right? Any all right? Give God a hand clap of praise. In my church, in my church, the way I end my sermons, we do a little thing where I say, I was about to put this thing down. And I always say, and, it, and when I was going to put it down, but God said, and my church finished it for me, so we're going to practice that. So when I come back the next time, hopefully, Pastor Terrence, y'all can join in. So I, what I'll say is, I was about to put this thing down, and God said, and what my church really said, you're going to miss the best part. So here you go. You ready? I was about to put this thing down, and God said, and I said, Lord, what is the best part? We already done went through the three points. We already gave the introductory scripture. It all lined up. We know now we got to cast our bread upon the water. And God said, well, here it is right here. He said, please understand that when you give a sacrifice, you really coming up. You're not giving up. You coming to the next level. You're not losing where you are. You're really getting ready to have a blessing that you never even imagined in your life. God is saying, I've already worked out the future when you're looking at the, the temporary. See, what the lady was looking at, she was looking at the temporary. But the Bible says, don't focus on the temporary, focus on the eternal. But how many of you know the eternal is what you can't see, but you better learn how to see the eternal so you won't have to worry about what you're looking at in the temporary. She was temporarily broke. She was temporarily trying to feed herself. But God had an eternal security plan, not just for her food, but for the resurrection and life being returned in the body of her son. Somebody say, what are you saying? You don't know where you're going to be. You don't know what you're going to face. Nobody know what tomorrow's going to bring but God himself. But what God has done is placed a prophet in your life, placed a pastor in your life that he will speak to him or her and they will come and tell you what thus saith the Lord. Do you know pastor saved your life? Jesus saved your soul, but a pastor will save your life. Y'all ain't got to clap. Jesus took care of everything eternally, but the pastor took care of in the temporary. You got to give God a hand clap of praise. Somebody say, yeah. 
See yeah. See yeah. See yeah. Now here's what I want to do. I got to go. I want you to go ahead and give high five to somebody. Uh, give it in the air because y'all might not want to touch. Uh, but give it a high five in the air uh, and repeat after me. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, whatever God wants, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants my money, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants his praise, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants a shout, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants some adoration, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants me to run around, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. Uh, if he wants me to come to church early, uh, I'm going to give him my bread. If he wants me to stay a little bit late, I'm going to give him my bread. If he asks me to pray for the pastor, I'm going to give him my bread. Y'all know on Sunday we used to cook for the pastor. Say, give me my bread. Y'all know we used to invite the pastor over to the house. Say, give me my bread. You got to get back to what used to work. Somebody say, yeah. Look at your neighbor say, the church service ain't over. When the doors of the church close, it just starts. Somebody say, yeah. Lord, you can have my bread. Jesus in communion said, here is the bread, which is a symbol of my body. And that woman didn't realize that what she was doing, she was symbolizing, watch this, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what she was doing. That's what she was doing. It was the first testimony of how a death situation, a dire situation that could lead to death that led to a resurrection could take place. And it happened because two people was obedient to what God told them to do. The church needs obedient, selfless serving, giving people in the body of Christ and when we become a giving church and when he lets when we let God use our gifts colonel because see you're gonna run this thing picture sharp will be nothing but order everything everything will be copacetic everything will line up because it's who you are and in your life, because he will bring order, Pastor Murrow will bring order, you're going to have order in your life. Somebody say amen. Give up your bread. Give up your body. Give up your gifts. Give up your talent. Give up your skills. Everything you've ever done in this life was to serve it in the church. And don't let anybody in this world pull you out of serving and ministering in the church of God. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Pastor Merle, you come on. Let's welcome Pastor Merle, Pastor Terrence up, come on. Let's give God a Holy Ghost amen, come on. Somebody stand up all over your feet, all over this building. Listen.